Hi everybody, this is Evangelist and Pastor Misha Softier, and I'm welcoming you to this Tuesday edition of Study in the Word. And I want to open it up with a word of prayer so that we can give people time to sign on. I started a little bit early tonight, um, that way I could get announcements and any little thing like that out of the way. Amen. So let's just open it up with prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to be here this evening and to bring your word, Lord. And I know that you're going to touch others today with with the message that you've given, Lord, and the study that you've given. Lord, you said your spirits are, your, your words are spirit in their life. And so, Father, I pray that um, they create life within the hearts of those that hear. In Jesus' name we pray today, and I thank you for it. Amen. Well, before we get into this, and if you sign on, you can send up a flare or something so I know you're here, and that way I can get underway and everything. I want to make sure that, uh, again, to encourage everyone to please try to sign on in time and, and, and get in here early. That way we don't, or, or right on time, so we don't have to go back and review anything. I, I see people signing on sometimes, and I just automatically want to go back because I don't want to... Uh, want them to miss anything, of course, I know you can replay this over again. Again, I want to remind you that if you have a share button, which I know that you do, <clears throat> please hit it when you've listened to the Word, and if you've enjoyed the Word, hit your share button and let other people hear this. Montserrat, God bless you. Good to see you. Um, folks, hit your share button. Um, because all of you have friends that I'll probably never have a chance to minister to uh, in person, but we can do it this way. And if you'll hit your share button and get the word out, if it's blessed you to others, then they'll be able to uh, receive, and then maybe they'll share the word. We'll just keep passing it forward, paying it forward to others, okay? So without any further delay, um, I want to go ahead, let me see where we're at time-wise, but right at, at about 9 o'clock, uh, my time here. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to start. And this evening is going to be a good uh, 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 reading and a good study, okay? Because we're going to talk about uh, the fact that God will accept anyone, anybody that hungers after him. It doesn't matter what other people think about that person. It doesn't matter if, what, what other people may think about you. If you have a hunger for the Lord, you're always able to come to Him, and He will receive you. And we're going to see an example of that of this. And it's such a beautiful story, and yet so many people uh, let it pass them by, and they don't really read it, and don't really uh, garnish the treasure that's really in this particular story. So we're going to go to the book of Luke tonight, chapter 19, and we won't be reading long, but we will read... Uh, the first 10 verses, okay? So if you have your Bibles with you, um, please turn to Luke 19, and I want you to read with me. We'll begin in verse 1. I, I'm reading out of the New King James uh, Version uh, this evening. I, I do use the King James, New King James. I do like to uh, change up sometimes, uh, but this is my favorite uh, 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 version or, uh, to minister out of. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll begin. And Jesus entered, and he passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Um, if you know anything about um, uh, Jewish history, that when they were under occupation, the Jews of Rome, okay, God bless you, Lorena, when they were under the occupation of Rome, Rome would take citizens of the country they occupied to collect taxes for the Romans. And Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He, he was a Jew that collected taxes from his own people for the Romans. And he was not just a tax collector, folks, but we want to dissect this, and so we're going to look at words carefully, okay? He wasn't just a tax collector. He was a chief tax collector, which meant that he was a supervisor of other tax collectors. What's interesting about this, okay, is that tax collectors were hated. They were they were hated by their own people because 
they would shake them down. They wouldn't just collect taxes for the Romans, but they would uh, they would shake them down and get a little bit of extra money for themselves. If I cut you some slack here, if I do this or do that there, you, you, you pay me a little bit of extra here, and they pocketed that money. And Zacchaeus was not a, a, an honest man, and we'll see that, okay, as we read further. But we'll continue, okay, in verse uh, 2. Okay, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. I wonder how he got that way, huh? And he sought to see who Jesus was. Now, we see something interesting here. Okay, Jesus is coming through the town. And Zacchaeus is this rich man. He he, he collected taxes from his own people. Probably wasn't well liked. But I can already see that there was something missing in his life because he, if he had everything and he was totally happy with where he was, he really probably wouldn't have cared who this Jesus was. But the Word of God says that he sought to see who Jesus was. Now, it's interesting because we see something else about Zacchaeus. It says, but he could not because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So we know Zacchaeus was a little guy. He was a small Jew, okay, with a lot of of power. Maybe he had a little man's complex, okay, and was collecting taxes and bullying people around and making them, you do this and you do that and everything like that was going on. God bless you, Aurelio. Lord bless you. God bless the Cardinals. Amen. Um, Thank you for signing in uh, this evening. So, Zacchaeus was this little guy and, and, and he was a chief tax collector. So he collected taxes uh, against his own people for the Romans. And he was despised. He wasn't well liked, didn't have any friends. Pretty, pretty, pretty obvious of that. Okay. And when he found that Jesus was coming into town, verse 3 tells us he sought to see who Jesus was, but couldn't see uh, because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. Verse 4 says, so he ran ahead, and what did he do? He ran ahead and he climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. Now, I really like to paint this picture out because, you see, Zacchaeus could have pushed and shoved and tried to fight his way through this crowd, but he was small and he wasn't able to see. But there was a hunger. You can already see this hunger. He was hungry enough, and sometimes I wonder if we really know how hungry we are. Maybe we're hungrier than we think we are. And Zacchaeus was hungry enough. He was um, wanting to see the Lord to the extent that he saw the crowd that was around him. He couldn't see over them, so he looked ahead and he saw where Jesus was going to go. He looked at the direction he was coming and thought, if I go over there and if I could get up into that tree, I could see him. So he was hungry and you could see he put that into motion and he put it into action. The word of God says, so he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see after him for he was going to pass that way. Verse five, and when Jesus came to that place, He looked up and saw him and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must stay at your house. Amen. Now, look at this, okay? Zacchaeus, he knows him by name. They never met before. I want you to know this evening, folks, you may be going through a lot of things. Maybe you don't have a lot of friends. Maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you wonder, what am I doing here? I don't know anybody. I don't have any friends. Or maybe you're not on the top 10 of most liked people in your uh, neighborhood or community or maybe in your in your home or anything. But I want you to know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And Jesus knows your name. Amen. And, he, and, and when he saw Zacchaeus, he looks up and he calls him by name. But he doesn't do, just do that. He calls him by name to let him know Zacchaeus, I know who you are, but I got something else for you. He says, make haste, Zacchaeus, get down. Come down out of that tree. Folks, it's time to come down. There are some of us today as Christians, 
Some of us, maybe we would like to be Christians. Maybe we're interested in believing. Maybe there's some curiosity, but we just haven't come down out of that tree yet. We haven't taken that step forward that we need to. And here he tells Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Why? For today, I'm coming to your house. I must stay at your house. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come over. I'm going to hang out. We're going to hang out together. We're going to dine together. We're going to be together. Jesus extends that invitation to a man that, by all appearances to the crowd, and by all appearances to Zacchaeus himself, that he didn't even know. That's the nature, folks, of the Lord Jesus Christ that we serve. We serve a good God. We serve a loving God. We need to know that. We need to pass it on to others. That's why I always say, hit your share button. Let's get this message out to others because there are other people. And I think Zacchaeus was probably one of the most uh, surprised people of everybody because I bet he said he doesn't say it. We can't see it in here. He didn't. So the Bible doesn't say it. But if he wasn't saying it, he probably was thinking, who, me? <laughs> yeah, you, you. Zacchaeus Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Verse 6, so Zacchaeus made haste, and he came down, and listen to this, and he received the Lord, he received him joyfully. You know, there is no fear in the goodness of God. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is the love of Christ that Zacchaeus must have seen took any fear or apprehension in meeting him, going into his presence, going into his house, away from him. You would think that maybe he would have been a little bit uh, uh, scared. Maybe there would have been some trepidation about going to the Lord's house and or the Lord coming to his house and them hanging or meeting together or anything. Maybe the last thing... Some of you think you would want us a meeting with the Lord. Zacchaeus wasn't a, a, a good guy. Like I said, he, he had, um, what should we say, skeletons in his closet, okay? There were things that were going on in his life that weren't right. But his hunger for the Lord and the Lord's love for people like you and for me overcame all of that and the two of them came together together they met together, they fellowship together, folks. Okay, so the Lord goes on to say um, in verse 6, So Zacchaeus made haste and came down and received Christ, or received the Lord joyfully. Now, the crowd had a reaction to it. The verse 7 says, But when they, the crowd, saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with the man who is a sinner. How did they crowd know that? Because they knew Zacchaeus' life. They knew that he was uh, not only collecting taxes against them for their enemy, the Romans, take, collecting taxes uh, and taking money from them and giving it to the Romans, Okay, but that he was also pocketing the money for himself, taking a little bit extra, that he, he was a wealthy guy. The Bible tells us that. How did he get that way? By taking kickbacks, okay? How do you know, Misha? How do you know that's what he did? Well, we're going to see it in a minute, okay? So he made haste, came down, received him joyfully, but when the crowd, or when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a, a guest with a man who's a sinner, okay? Then Zacchaeus stood, now, I think this is so important. Listen to this, folks. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone, if you've taken anything from anyone, <laughs> he did take from people. But he goes and says, And if I've taken anything from anyone, by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Now, in other words, if he... Falsely accused. Well, you didn't pay your taxes. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I don't have it in my books here, so you're going to have to pay it twice. And then he would take that extra money and pocket it. And that's kind of what, what, it, what, what it looks like happened. That's the investigator in me, okay, that's, that's telling you that. Look, Lord, I, I, I give half my possessions or, or goods to the poor. 
And if I've taken anyone from anyone by false accusations, I restore it four, uh, fourfold. Now, now this is important. Maybe you don't see this, okay? But see, folks, when Zacchaeus had a revelation of the Lord, okay, when God revealed himself, when Christ came and invited him into a place of fellowship, Something happened to Zacchaeus, and suddenly he had a revelation of himself. He was convicted of his own sins. He was convicted of his shortcomings, but he didn't stop there with the conviction. But right away, you see something happen. There was repentance. How do I know? He didn't say, God, forgive me. I've I've made a mistake in my life. He didn't come at him that way. But he immediately turned around and did what was right. He was going left. And I always say that this is the definition of repentance, folks. It's not saying, Lord, I'm sorry, and it's not saying, God, forgive me. That's a good start. But folks, repentance is doing a U-turn and going the opposite way. It's thinking about your situation, your sin, the way God uh, is thinking about it and seeing it that way. And then making a U-turn and having a change of mind or a change of direction. That is a really a good definition of repentance. And we see Zacchaeus did that, folks. Zacchaeus stood, he tells him, Lord, I give half of my, my, my goods, possessions to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it, not just give it back one-fold, not two-fold, not three-fold, four-fold, <clears throat> okay? Now, I'm not saying that you have to do that, but here's my point. When he had a revelation of the Lord, when he saw the love of Jesus, when he saw that Jesus was willing to come into his heart and into his life, into his home, and dwell with him, there something happened. As the Spirit of God moved upon Zacchaeus' heart and began to convict him, and he said, Lord, look. I, he, he knew right away at that point. He had a revelation. He knew there was something different about this man, Jesus, that was walking through town, something different than any other man. He wasn't just another man, just not, not just an ordinary man. And we see it right from the beginning because when he heard that Jesus was coming into town, he wanted to go and see this man. He was running ahead of the crowd, climbing up a tree because he was so short, getting up there so that he could just get, see if I could just see him. There was a hunger. There was a need. There was, perhaps was an emptiness in his heart. He had maybe heard about this man, Jesus, that went from town to town and performed miracles and, and, and healed and changed. People's lives were changed. And he wanted to see who this guy was, even though he did not know who he was. And so we continue the story. Okay, he tells him, I'll, I'll restore anything that I, I've, I've taken fourfold. Now, Jesus responds, and listen to what Jesus says back to Zacchaeus. Verse 9, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Folks, Zacchaeus was lost but now he was found, you see. And God responds, folks, I want you to see this, okay? Jesus responds when he sees an act of contrition, an act of repentance, a willingness in our hearts to do the right thing. There are some people and you're waiting and for, for God to, to wave a magic wand in your life and, and, uh, and hoping that your life will change that way. But folks, Christ did everything he needed to do for us when he went to the cross. He died for the cross, on the cross for us. He died for us so that we could be redeemed back to the Father, shedding his blood on the cross, okay, for our sins and bringing redemption, bringing relationship back between the mankind and God. Everything that Adam and Eve had destroyed, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and they broke fellowship, uh, with when Adam and Eve, I'm sorry, I was distracted by something somebody posted here. Okay, when Adam and Eve, okay, um, sinned in the garden, they broke fellowship with the Lord. Okay, and they basically brought that on all of mankind. So the Lord sent an eternal sacrifice coming to the earth in the form of a, a, a of a man himself, sending his son. Okay. God, and yet all man and all God, but he sets his 
manifestation of deity to the side and walks on earth. The Bible says he, he, he was tempted in all ways and walked through as we walk, you know, but without sin. I mean, didn't do this, commit the sins of doing the things that we did and the, that were wrong. But he came to this earth, defeated Satan as a man and became the once and for all eternal sacrifice for our sins so that we no longer have to kill sheep and goats and lambs and whatever else there is and put the sacrificial knife to it because his blood did it once and for all. Amen. And so so it's so important for you to see. And this is why Jesus turns to Zacchaeus. Now, Jesus had not yet gone to the cross, but... You know the, what the Bible says about God? He calls those things that are not as though they were. So in the eyes of the Lord, it was already a done deal. In the eyes of God the Father, it was already a done deal that Jesus would go to the cross and die. He was the lamb, remember, that was slain before the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible says. Okay, so that's how he could say to Zacchaeus or to anyone else at that particular point in time, Salvation has come to this house. Salvation, true salvation has come to this house. And it came as a result of Zacchaeus' actions, okay? His reception, his willingness. And the Lord showed such a willingness to come. You know, you, you ever really realize this, folks, that I, I was just, as I was just sharing this with you, it just hit me that, it was, the, the, you know, the Lord really really sought Zacchaeus out. I mean, Zacchaeus climbed the tree and was looking, but the Lord was looking for him too and, and found him. And out of all those multitudes of people, it was a crowd. He picks the one guy, Zacchaeus. Maybe Zacchaeus had a little bit more hunger. Maybe there was something in him that the rest of the crowd just didn't quite have. I don't know. I don't know, but how hungry this evening are you for God? How hungry are you for the Lord? I don't care if you don't know him or if you've been a Christian for a long time, folks. How hung I'm asking the question on both sides. How hungry are you for God this evening? If you're hungry, he's not going to reject you. The Bible says, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise, no way cast out. And this is perfect proof. This is a great story if you want to share the love of, of Christ. If you want to share the willingness of Jesus to meet your needs, to come to you wherever you are, in whatever situation you're in. God, you know, God didn't tell, and I, I, I like this. Jesus didn't look up at the tree and say, oh, I know who you are, Zacchaeus. I know who you are. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I know you want to come down off that tree and come to me, but no, uh -uh. you can't do it. You know why? Because you got to go out and take care of it and perfect yourself first. You go out and clean up your life first and then come over. Then we'll, you and I can, we can talk. You know, some people approach God that way. They think that in order to go to church, I've heard people tell me, you know, Pastor, one of these days I'm going to come to your church. I just need to get some things straightened out with the Lord first. <laughs> Look, folks, you don't clean your life up first and then come to the Lord. You come to the Lord and then allow Him, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to clean up your life. He'll do it for you. And this was the same scenario, the same back and forth that was going on. If you see the psychology of, of what was happening here almost between the Lord and Zacchaeus, I hate using that word somehow, but, but it just, I guess it fits, you know, for this particular message. There was a a, a, a a thing, a back and forth thing, almost, I don't want to say a mind game, but there was something going on here, you know, between Zacchaeus and the Lord. Zacchaeus, you know, <laughs> didn't have to clean up his life first. But when the Lord invited him in and said, look, you know what? <laughs> the Lord didn't say anything to him about his past. He didn't say, well, you know, I know who you are. I know what you've done. I know you've ripped off people. I know you collect taxes against your own people. I know you've pocketed the money and everything, but I'm, I'm going to come over to your house. We'll talk. The Lord never brought up his past to him. He just said, hey, come on down out of the tree. I know who you are. It's a kiss. I'm calling you by name. Come on down because today I'm coming to your house and I'm going to stay with you for a while. See, that's the Lord. 
He unconditionally will fellowship with us if we have the desire and hunger to even make a step, some kind of effort to seek him out. He will respond to that. I always believe that if you'll take one step to the Lord, he'll take five steps to, towards you. And that's what happened with Zacchaeus. Uh, he, he just ran ahead of a crowd, saw a tree, saw an opportunity and climbed it. And the rest is history. Okay, and we see this. Jesus came to him, or Jesus said to him, after he had gone to his house, or as he was going to his house, to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. This doesn't mean that you have to be a physical Jew to be a Christian, okay? We are, uh, and I am actually, a, a, in case those of you don't know it, I am a Israeli-born Jew, okay? But, the reality, what I'm trying to say to you is that all of us, Jew or Gentile, we're all adopted into the house of God, all adopted into the house of God, and we all become sons of Abraham. This story of Zacchaeus is great, okay? Today, is, salvation has come to this house because he also, God bless you, Paula, Paula Marie, salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So you gotta, you got to underline that last part. Because why did Jesus say that? Because Zacchaeus needed salvation and he was lost. Folks, go back and read the story. Some signed on late. I wish I, I could go back and just redo this whole thing for, for some of you that did. But the message will be here on Facebook Live, and you need to listen to this. Listen to it again. And, and think about Zacchaeus and, and, and the way the Lord treated him. And I love this story. I brought this message at churches before, and I changed the title. Today it's A Man Called Zacchaeus. But my message in many churches in the past was Zacchaeus, come down. Zacchaeus, come down. I love it. And so that that's really it today, folks. That's the study in our in the word this evening. But I know that this has blessed you, and this is the message that you want to use your share button on your Facebook page, and you want to like it and you want to share it because, like I said, all of you got thousands of friends, hundreds of friends that I, I'll never meet personally and have the opportunity to speak to personally. But this is a way of getting the word to them, and there are, there are some Zacchaeuses out there. Male Zacchaeuses, female Zacchaeuses, people that they got a little bit of uh, little skeletons in their closet, a little bit of of uh, dirt on the hands. Not everything is perfect. Not everything is right. But 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 they they're 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 reaching out. They're looking for something. There there's an emptiness. They 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 know they need something, and they they've heard about this Jesus, but they haven't experienced the reality of him. And and all the Lord is waiting is to is an opportunity to pounce on that opportunity and on that hunger, so that He can create a relationship and fellowship with you. So share that because all of us have friends. We all know people that are going through things. Maybe some that never knew the Lord. Maybe others that have known, but they've just wandered away and strayed. It's time to come back home. And the Lord is right there. Okay, so I want to thank everybody for sharing uh, in, in with me tonight as we did our uh, Tuesday edition of Studying the Word. Um, I want to pray a prayer here because I believe that maybe there will be those that would sign on tonight. I know this stays on Facebook Live and eventually I transfer this like uh, over to YouTube where I have a lot of messages there also. And I know that there will be people after the fact that are going to listen to this. And there, there's a a need in their heart. They're, 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 they're lost. They're lonely like Zacchaeus, not very well liked maybe, don't have a lot of friends. But 
and I, I'm just um, and they're ready. If 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 the Lord would just reveal Himself, they're they're ready to, to turn. And you don't have to tell them you need to repent. They they're ready to do it. Zacchaeus, man, he the Lord never said you need to repent. The Lord just had fellowship with him, and Zacchaeus said, "Look, everything that I've done dishonestly, Lord, I'll, I'll give it to the poor. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll make things right." The Lord never said a word to him about it, folks. When you have a revelation of the Lord, you have a revelation of yourself and your needs, and and that's what occurred. So share this with somebody else, okay? And it'll be here live to go back and listen to, and it'll also be here um, for those that you share with, okay? So we'll do that. And I want to thank you, everybody, you know, for signing on. So I want to pray a prayer uh, for those that maybe you want to recommit your life, okay, to the Lord. Maybe you've never asked the Lord and you're listening. Maybe you've said the words, but nothing really changed in your life. And I want to tell you, as I've, I tell many people when I minister in many churches, folks, that words are only words unless you mean them. Uh, we've all had this experience where somebody said, I love you, and you said, I love you too, but where are they? And where are you? Are you with them anymore? Are they with you anymore, folks? I mean, we see that in relationships. At the time that we said it, maybe we meant it. But words are only words unless you mean them. And when we pray this prayer to the Lord, folks, we need to mean it. It has to come from the heart, okay? It has to be real. And you need to surrender your life. He can't just be your Savior. He has to be your Lord. And many of us, I myself included at one point in time in my life, growing up in the church, I knew Jesus as my Savior, and I... How how should I put this? Used him as my savior when I got into trouble. I was on my knees. Help me, God, get me out of this mess. But I never knew and understood his lordship. And when when Jesus is Lord, it means that he is the one that controls the decision-making process in your life. He's the one that sits upon the throne of your heart. You get off and he gets on. I always like to say I used to be the driver of my car, captain of my ship, and pilot of my plane until I crashed all three. And then I realized I needed a new pilot, a new driver, and a new captain. And so <laughs> I got in the back seat and let the Lord handle all that. Folks, that's what Lordship is, though. We He has to be the one that's in control in our lives. It's, 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 it's not just enough for him to be your Savior. You need to know him as Lord. Jesus addressed the crowd and he says, why is it that you say, call me Lord? You say, Lord, Lord, but you don't do as I say or as I ask. Folks, we need to know him that way. We need that relationship. We can't just go out and do whatever we want to do. It's my world, Lord, and you're lucky to be a part of it. And run out and do whatever we do and expect God to go with us. I had a minister one time tell me, you know, uh, Misha, whatever door opens up, no matter what it is, you just run through it and God will go through it with you. <laughs> Folks, that, that's, that's not true. Sometimes the door can open up and it could be the wrong door. <laughs> you run through that door and you're leaving Jesus coughing in the dust somewhere a mile away. That's, but it's not lordship, folks. It's not we go where we want and God goes with us. It's that we go where he wants us to go and we go with him. All right, so let's make a decision this evening as we pray that you... Surrender your life to him. Say those words, I surrender. Two words that God would love to hear from every person and mean it. Okay, so let's let's say that prayer together. Okay, Lord Jesus, and you just can repeat it with me if you want. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead, that you're alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I know that I'm a, I'm a sinner. I know that I've failed. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking that you forgive me of every sin. Lord, those that I can remember, those that I can't remember. And that you come into my life today as my Lord and as my Savior. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you as my Lord. And I commit, Lord, not by my own power, by the power of your Holy Spirit, your love, your grace, your mercy, and what you've accomplished on the cross for me, Lord, by those things, I commit to serve you 
all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you for it. And I praise you, Lord, that I can say today, I am a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, and they weren't just words, okay, but you meant those words, then I can say with assurance today, just like Zacchaeus, you know, you were once lost, but now you're found, okay? Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And folks, I'm going to leave you and I'll see you again Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Mountain Time. That's my time in Arizona. 8 p.m. for a lot of you that are listening uh, in California, Pacific Time. And of course, I'll have a lot of people coming on from Pakistan and uh, later on this evening and from other places uh, throughout the world to, to watch these broadcasts. And I thank all of you for signing on. And like I always say, keep your feet to the ground. Keep your head to the sky and I'll see you next week. God bless you and have a good one, okay? Bye-bye.